Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to City Skylines and welcome to the 2022 Global Collaboration. My name is Dylan, I run the Conflict Nerd YouTube channel and today it is my absolute honor and privilege to be following in the footsteps of some immensely creative and talented City Skylines players with this amazing map, with all of these amazing builds. I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna build my little thing, I'm gonna go to town on building my little, my little seaside resort. That's what I'm gonna be building. And it's gonna be good. I've got some ideas. I've got some ideas based on not just real world locations, but actually a little bit of real world history. Now, as we all know, City Skylines, Seaside Resorts, the content creator pack came out maybe a month, two months ago. I don't really know when it came out. It came out a couple of months ago and it features 19th century Seaside res Resort buildings. Now, it turns out that there is a place called Cape May in New Jersey, which is, in fact, one of America's oldest vacation resort destinations, featuring 19th century Victorian style buildings. So today, I want to take a little bit of inspiration from Cape May, New Jersey, and I want to build a little vacation resort. And to be fair, if there was a map to build a vacation resort on, it would be this one. We have beautiful hills. We have amazing forests. We have white sand beaches and the bluest of blue waters surrounding this island. It's perfect. And so I'm going to come in here and this is essentially going to be my canvas because I have to be careful. And that's something I'm very mindful of. I have to be careful because there's a finite number of seaside resort style buildings. If we go into the find it mod right here, I can go ahead and apply extra filters and I can say that I wanna sort by certain DLCs or content creator packs and then I can go in here and I can say that I'm looking specifically for seaside resorts and suddenly we have every building available to us that came with the seaside resorts content creator pack. Now they're beautiful. They're amazing. It's a bunch of hotels. There's some museums in here. They're really incredible buildings, but there is a finite number of them and some of them are quite small. So let's go ahead and prepare the canvas. We'll clear out some trees. We'll get rid of some roads and we'll figure out exactly just how big and how much space this thing's going to take up. And so this right here is what we're going to be working with. Now, I should say we're not going to leave it like this. The hills and the natural details and the trees are all going to come back. But I like to set myself a bit of a canvas so I know that the space I'm working in is good to go. So this has been leveled. We've got rid of the trees. And now the only thing we need to do with a canvas is get a pallet. And so what I'm going to do is go into the roads menu and I'm gonna get myself any of these. It doesn't really matter which road we use. And I'm just gonna go ahead and lay it right about here. And we're gonna just say that that's gonna be my canvas. And what I'm gonna do on my canvas is basically place every single building that is a part of the Seaside Resorts content creator pack so that I can just come up here Take a look at it, know exactly what I've got to work with, know exactly what it looks like, exactly how it behaves, and then we can copy it, we can paste it, and we can position it using move it and just all sorts of different things. And there we go. We have every building that I'm going to be using in my seaside resort. And of course, they do look a little bit weird because they're not quite supposed to be placed like this. This guy especially is a a little bit weird looking, but this guy is, to be fair, supposed to be positioned in the water, as I think uh, this one is as well, which is something I'm kind of excited about. I might try and get some buildings down in the water. At the very least, I might try and get, there's a pier. This guy right here, the New Orchard Ocean Pier. It could quite reasonably go somewhere like this and then stick right out into sea, something a bit like that. And I think that's pretty great. And I think that's something that's going to stay right there. And we're going to have to figure out a way to incorporate this into whatever I'm about to build. And so speaking of whatever I'm about to build, let's go ahead and start planning out some roads. I'm going to use the two lane gravel road for this because it's nice and simple, nice and easy. And basically because we're dealing with a bunch of older buildings, I 
kind of want to play with some grids to begin with. We'll get some angles in here and stuff like that as well. But I think what I'll do is I'm going to start here. I'm going to go something like 40 units and I'm going to kind of use this as my main promenade. Although I would like to turn it just a little bit to sort of go maybe 20 units that way. Just so we have a little bit of an angle in there so that things are a little bit more interesting. And maybe we can use this corner as something that connects to the pier. But we'll figure that out in just a little bit. Now, we do have a great selection of buildings. But like I said, some of them are a bit smaller. So I need to be careful with how big I go on this district because... While I don't have any issue with copying and pasting buildings a few times over to make things look a bit more interesting, I don't want to go too crazy copying and pasting buildings. So, let's go ahead and get ourselves a very, very simple little grid right here. And we're just going to use little 10 by 10 squares for the time being at least. And uh, what we can do with this is actually sort of continue it like this. So it's just a proper little 10 by 10 grid right there. I'm not going to be connecting these roads together, but I could. It is an option that we have. And so what I'd like to do is start by grabbing just some of these interesting buildings, such as this one, the Hotel Vesper. It's a bit of an L-shaped building, and so it could go somewhere like right there, and it follows the corner. The only issue is that it is set back from the road, and even if I upgrade the road into a two-lane plain street, it's still back from the road a little bit. If I turn it into a two-lane road with grass, it's still back from the road a little bit. And I do wonder, I haven't tested this, and I'm not going to do this, but uh, yeah, that's maybe a little bit excessive right there. So, what I'm going to do is turn this road here into the two-lane road with median trees, because of course I want trees along my promenade. And eventually... I'm going to use move it to get these buildings to be right against the curb. But just for the time being, while replacing them, let's leave them as they should be on the regular grid. So we have this building here. I think it's pretty good. And I'm thinking something like this. Isleworth Gardens could maybe go next to it. Because it's a pretty impressive looking building, but it's also kind of a similar color palette. It's got this similar kind of red carrying through there, even if the rooftops are a little bit different. My only thought with this building is it does kind of look like it should be facing the sea, doesn't it? So what if we actually put this guy here? Or what if we put it on this side of the road? I think that's a little bit better. I think I prefer that. And keep in mind, they are going to get shuffled around. They're not going to be staying like this. This guy, Hotel Fisk. Let's go ahead and grab it and we'll put it right about, uh, let's say right about there. And I think that's a good spot for Hotel Fisk. Again, it's going to be shuffled around a little bit. We've got the Ausable Chasm Hotel. We'll go ahead and put the Ausable Chasm Hotel right about there. And I think they look pretty decent next to each other. And now I want to grab this guy, the Hotel Allaire, because I have a bit of an idea for this one. And the idea is pretty simple. I'm going to place the hotel right there and I'm going to use move it to duplicate it. And I'm going to rotate it so that we can put two of these guys nicely back to back like that now obviously there is a bit of adjustment needed so what we'll do is just shuffle it over to right about i want to say there and that doesn't look too bad yeah there's a, if you look closely it's a little weird looking but it now gives us a bit of a courtyard and we could put a pool in here we can pave this we can put tables we can put parasols and it gives us a really interesting looking building that fills up this entire space. And that's what I'm looking for. And so this right here is going to be the rough layout of all of the buildings. Now, there are a couple that I didn't bother placing. And there is one you can see off here in the distance, which is very specifically being left there. We're about to come to it. But before we do, I kind of want to come in here and I want to just start moving the buildings just a little bit to line them up with the roads. So in this case, I want the stairs of this guy to be just touching the curb, just like that. And then for this guy, kind of a similar story. We get the one step right there. So bring you right forwards for you. Again, similar story, right forward to there. And this is something that's going to need to be done for every single one of these buildings, which is going to be a little bit of a pain. 
but it's going to be worth it. This one, for example, we bring the stairs up on that side to the curb, and then we bring it forward to about there, and it just fits really nicely in that corner. Now, it does leave some space here, but something I think I'm going to do is try and make a point of, I guess, getting some parking lots in here and getting some parks in general around a lot of these buildings because a lot of them are hotels. So in a way, they should have parking lots and they should have parks and amenities and things that people are going to want. So that's a little something something that we are going to have to do. But before we do, like I said, we just need to get all these buildings lined up with the sidewalks and looking good looking like they uh, they belong there and so that's going to be a bit of a tedious process but through the magic of uh, video editing it's going to be a matter of seconds for you and so now that that's done i want to come over and look at the hotel colonial because i mentioned that i'm taking a very loose inspiration from a place called cape may in new jersey and in cape may there is a street called heritage triangle and at the end of heritage triangle there are a bunch of buildings that kind of vaguely look a bit like this. Now, they don't look identical, but this is a building that I'm going to use to sort of serve that purpose. And I'm going to try and serve that purpose back here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in, I'm going to get my gravel road, and I'm going to bring it straight through to honestly about there. It doesn't really need to go too far. And I want to go four units, and I want to go another four units. And what I'm going to do is basically put a couple of buildings right there. Well, one of these guys right there. And I guess we want to go and get ourselves the Hotel Colonial a couple more times. And we're going to just do a little something, something that if it works out, it's going to be kind of interesting. If it doesn't work out, then, you know, it's, it's fine. But basically... If I select those two buildings and if I hold left alt and then click on them and move them back, they stay snapped to the grid. And then if I grab these guys and do the same thing, I can sort of feather the buildings back a little bit. So something like this and something kind of like this. Now it looks weird. It does. It does look a little bit weird. But at the same time, it's it's different. And that's that's kind of what I want it to be. So what I'm now going to do is select all of them, and I want to see if I can bring them forward. I actually can, but I don't know how well that's going to behave once I upgrade this to a road. Although in this case, it's going to be a two-lane plain street. So we'll take a bit of a look, and honestly, that's not too bad. But what I'm thinking I'd kind of like to do is try and just angle this guy so that this road kind of goes back something a bit like that. I don't know how well that necessarily works, but at the same time, I do kind of like it. <laughs> it is it is a bit weird, but it's also kind of cool. I just don't know if that's necessarily the layout we're going for. So let's take those out, and what we'll do instead is just try and build this manually. So if I turn off my road guidelines, I can hold left alt to snap to uh, different angles, although I think what we'll do is turn off all angle snapping. Well, turn off all snapping except for angles, and it's uh, left control, actually. We do need road lengths as well. And we'll go 130 degrees, five units. And then right here, we're basically doing the same thing. So I think that. And I think that's okay. I think that kind of works. Although I think what I'm going to have to do is select these buildings and just move them back. Oh God, they're not snapping to the grid anymore. Uh, just move them back a little bit. So something kind of like that. So they're still technically on the roads. They're just not on the roads. And I kind of like that. It's different. It's it's definitely different. And it's going to be fun to play around with. Although I do need to use Move It to um, just reset these buildings until they turn white, which is the color that I want for them. So that one's been sorted. And then what we can do behind these guys is just extend a bit of a path that sort of goes something like that. And then what I'm thinking I'm going to do is go in and get some fences We'll use maybe the forestry fence for this because I think it'll look pretty good. And I'm basically, well, actually, I suppose I could use the parallel tool in the, what is it, the network multi-tool. So if I go here and I go something like, let's see, if I grab you and I want things to be parallel, I could just do this. 
and that's actually pretty good. That's kind of what I'm looking for. Although I do need to ever so slightly just bring this in. So let's just try to reduce the offset so it's a little bit closer to the path, something like that. And then all I need to do is go ahead and put some fences between all of these buildings. No big deal. And so this right here, I think, is going to be perfect for these buildings. They have some road connections, which are now pedestrian roads, which looks amazing. We've got some curbs around here so you can kind of see where you're not supposed to drive. And they've got some back gardens, which I think look lovely, even if there's not actually any doors on the backs of these buildings to get out there. We can just imagine that maybe there are some doors on the buildings or... I don't know, they can climb out the windows for all I care. They've got some back gardens. They can enjoy them. They can figure it out. It's not my job to, you know, help them figure out how to use their backyard. It's just my job to build it. And so now we come to a time lapse. This is going to be the entire process of detailing and decorating the entirety of my seaside resort. It's not going to be every little detail. I'm going to cut some parts out here and there, but this is a process that took about four hours to get things exactly how I wanted, and I figured a four-hour episode right in the middle of the global collaboration wasn't really such a good idea. So, a time-lapse is what we're going to go for, and fun fact, it's possibly been a couple of years since I sat down to talk over a time-lapse. Usually, I'll do a little bit of music as a part of an episode that has commentary elsewhere. Kind of similar to this, commentary before, commentary after, but time lapse in the middle that I'm also talking over. Anyway, enough of this meta conversation about making videos. Let's talk a little bit about the inspiration for this seaside resort, because I've mentioned a place called Cape May, which is, exists in New Jersey. It's a real place. Now, Cape May is located at the southern tip of the Cape May Peninsula in Cape May County, New Jersey, right where Delaware Bay meets the Atlantic Ocean. As of 2020, the population was just 2,768 people. However, during the summer, it can expand by up to 40 or even 50,000 visitors. Now, you might be wondering how or why this is relevant to cities' skylines, and that's simply because the entire city of Cape May is an historic district and a national historic landmark, all thanks to its high concentration of Victorian architecture from the 19th century. In fact, Cape May's history as a seaside resort dates back to the mid-18th century making it the oldest seaside resort in the United States. And as a final fun fact about Cape May, it just so happens, and this is unrelated, it just so happens to be home to the only Coast Guard recruit training center in the entirety of the United States. And it has been that way for 40 years, going all the way back to 1982. Now let's talk a little bit about what I'm doing in the time lapse and less about real world history. My goal with everything I'm doing is to make things feel planted, make them feel like they've been in this location for a while, rather than just being something that I slap together over the course of a couple of hours, which is it's what it is. That's city skylines for you. That's kind of what you do. But I want this to feel lived in. And that's something I try to do with a lot of the things that I build. I don't really like to build all neat and shiny and new and perfectly clean. Now, I'm not covering this in garbage and dirt, but I do want to get some curbs in here. I want the plants to be a little bit overgrown just here and there. I want the giant palm trees, and I want this place to feel like it reasonably could have been here since, you know, the 1800s, if not a little bit, you know, beyond that. So that's the goal. That's why I'm using these different paths, these different materials. There's bits of modern with the very clean looking curbs. I like to think that the amusement park paths are a little bit older. There's some other spots where I'm using older looking paths again. And just generally, it helps to make this place feel, I guess, a little bit chaotic. 
I didn't want to go super uniform with this. That was another thing I was trying, although we do have pretty much the, the forestry fence just about everywhere, but I didn't want to go for uniformity. I wanted things to kind of feel like they would flow a little bit, like there's a lot of little paths that you can take in and around the buildings, like you have choices for how you can get from one side of the seaside resort to the other side of the seaside resort. And I think I managed to do that. And I think covering it in palm trees and covering it in a little bit of chaos kind of helped with that. And of course, we had to get some services in here as well, which is what I'm working on at the moment. This is the historic police station and the historic fire station. And I wasn't originally 100% convinced that I was going to make this work. I didn't really have an idea for how these were going to go. And I was considering going to the Steam Workshop and downloading a bunch of props. But in the end, it just wouldn't really match what I'd been doing. So I just put some small roads in here, a bunch of parking lots. I put a fence around it and eventually I put some bollards in front of it and it just ends up being its own little isolated space. And that's good. The only thing this space doesn't actually have is a medical center or education or death care or garbage. There's a lot of things it doesn't have, but in terms of emergency services, it just doesn't have a medical center. But that's okay, I'm sure. I don't think anyone actually lives here, so. I don't know if we need, oh, we probably do need medical coverage. I actually don't know. I I I should know that. I've played City Skylines for, believe it or not, coming up on eight years next year. That's kind of crazy to think about. But regardless, the little emergency services square here just needs some trees and it'll be sorted. And then it's just a case of going around and continuing to do the same thing that we've been doing around all of the buildings, plants, trees, bushes, color here and there and so on. Now, this was the final little project for the entire seaside resort. I wanted to get a little road connection for the pier. And so we had something come out at a bit of an angle. It looked a bit weird having grass around it. So I thought, I guess I can put more curbs around it using the concrete retaining wall network. And doing that once again, help this to just feel I don't want to use the word planted, but it is the word I'm going to use. It just made it feel planted. It made it feel like it belonged in here and it makes it feel a little bit more official. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what it is with me and concrete retaining walls, but there's something about them that I just absolutely adore. I use them all the time, probably way too much, but I like to think they help. And so with that done, that is essentially all of the construction. The last thing to do here was just get some road connections in, get the connection from the highway over to the rest of the collaboration builds, and of course connect the seaside resort to all of these roads as well. Now something I did with that was a couple of winding roads so we could kind of go up and down a hill, because obviously the terrain kind of needs a little bit of love, it looks a bit terrible right now. But once that's all done, that is basically it. So let's get out of the time lapse. Let's get back into the gameplay and let's take a look at the finished Seaside Resort. Now, this is something that I'm actually really proud of and I'm really happy with how this has turned out. It's got a wonderful amount of detail. It looks exactly the way I was hoping it would look. It does look like it might be missing a couple of trees here and there, though. I think I put some trees along the front of this guy and I'm almost certain I put... In fact, I know I did put a pool back here, so I do seem to be missing a couple of things around here, which is a little bit weird, but we'll not worry too much about it. It's not the end of the world. I can go in and replace those, but this is it. This is my seaside resort. At some point, if not right now, there'll be some cinematics showing you some close-ups of this thing. I think it turned out absolutely fantastic. I hope you like how it's turned out as well. It's something I wasn't really expecting to, to look like this, but this is giving me so many ideas for my own cities, and this is something I'm absolutely going to do again, because this is... Mwah, I'm really pleased with this. It's also another lesson in patience. I talked about this in one of my own videos recently, but there's so many times that I will get about halfway through a build and zoom out and look at it and think, meh, not too sure about this one. This right here is another lesson in perseverance for me. 
because I'm glad I stuck with this. I think it looks wonderful. So that is going to be it. That's all from me for the Global Collaboration 2022. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. It's been an absolute pleasure, as always. And a special thank you to Paradox for having me along and letting me be a part of this. I'm, I feel kind of honored and privileged and seen, and I, I do really appreciate it. So thank you for watching, everybody. Thank you, Paradox. And I will see each and every one of you next time. Maybe. Bye-bye. <laughs>